Hi there. Oh, seriously? Hey. See, that's better. Everybody's really there. That's outstanding. So right around January, I had completely given up. My life was totally over. 252 pounds, working 15, 17 hour days, height of my career, best things ever happened to me business-wise, couldn't be better except I was not sleeping, I was eating everything in sight, out to lunch four days a week, dinners three nights a week, uh, every time I was up about two o'clock in the morning, there was not an Oreo in the world that was safe. I, I can simply say to you that I decided at that point I was going to die just like my father did, overweight, really unhappy, and probably adult onset diabetic. And what happened was kind of interesting because I had my annual physical right around that uh, May of that year, this year actually, 2013. And I didn't want to go to the doctor. I'd put it off. I was supposed to do it in February, but wow, by May, I knew I had to do it. Wife was kicking me out of the bedroom at this point. She's wearing earplugs. I have sleep apnea. Nothing's going to work. I'm snoring louder than a chainsaw. The doctor calls up with the blood results and he says, look, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is you're still alive. You're clinically healthy. The bad news is your blood sugar is in the high normal range for the first time ever. And I'm going, oh my God, am I diabetic? He goes, no, not yet. And by the way, I can't tell from one blood test. You need a bunch of blood tests, but you're certainly on the path. You know how your father passed away. You're gonna join him and you're gonna join him relatively soon. So I'd like you to come in for a series of blood tests. And while you're there, I'm gonna get you some needles and some lancets and some syringes. And I'm gonna show you how you're gonna take your blood every day. I'm like, wow, okay. I don't know about you guys, but when I was in sixth grade, they had the little lancet that you had to poke yourself with and you put your blood on a slide and you kink your blood count This it was biology class. That's the only thing I remember from grade school and I'm still traumatized by it. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. What, what can I do? And he said, well, Shelly, look in the mirror. I'm not going to tell you something you don't know. You're 252 pounds. You got to lose 30 to 50 pounds and you have to do it now. I said, well, what's my timeline? He goes, the timeline's up to you. I said, well, so I'll make you a deal. No needles, no syringes, none of this weird ass blood test. I don't want to do any of that. Uh, see you in October, 30, 50 pounds lighter, and you'll let me know how that goes. And he's like, okay. So right around the time, my youngest son Craig, came home from college. He graduated college. He goes, wow, you're too fat. Let's go walking. Now, I'm a technology media and entertainment consultant, and one of the things I talk about is the quantified self. I teach this to all my clients. Uh, Pam mentioned Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Can you imagine marketing ice cream that's 280 calories per scoop, and you know someone's wearing a band like this Jawbone Up or your Nike Fuel or your Fitbit or Fitbug, something to quantify what you're doing and thinking that that was a good idea. So big food is the next target after big tobacco, and we know that if it comes from a plant and the plant doesn't grow in the ground, it's bad for you to eat. Yeah, I got all that, I got all that. But I needed to quantify myself. So how was I going to do it? Well, it's super easy. You take uh, a walk every day for 10,000 steps and you try and sleep seven and a half hours a night. And I'm thinking to myself, sleep seven and a half hours a night? I don't even know how that's possible. But it is possible. So every morning, I live by the East River. I'm out walking on the East River with my son, Jared. And then I'm walking where, uh, in my house uh, in the country, up and down the hills. It didn't matter. Walk, walk, walk. Walking is good for you. And all I was trying to do was walk more than 10,000 steps. On this particular day, I walked 15,420 steps, 7.3 miles. And I was able to burn about 2,874 calories. And that's awesome. And I kept walking. I was going on a business trip to Chicago. This is Lakeshore Drive. I'm at the Katy Trail in Dallas. I'm having some fun in Tokyo, but I wasn't losing any weight. This was a real issue. Right up until July, I was bubbling around 250, 245 pounds. I'm thinking, this whole quantified self thing is BS. I'm not losing anything. Then I realized there's a magic equation, an equation that I really needed to take to heart. And that equation is 3,500 calories equal a pound. Every 3,500 calories you eat that you don't burn, you are going to gain a pound. And every 3,500 calories you burn, you don't eat, you're going to lose a pound. Except it's not really true because of a thing called diet-induced adaptive thermogenesis. And what that means basically is your body will adapt. It's going to like think it's starving and it'll stop losing weight and then you won't be losing the weight you think you're losing. And so, yeah, it doesn't work. And every medical professional is saying, look, Shelly, this isn't going to work. I'm like, you know what? I need some place to start. I'm quantifying myself. So for me, right now, 3,500 calories equals a pound. Let's go. 
And so I had to go the other side of the equation. I need to figure out how much I was intaking, how many calories am I eating? And in my case, I said, I'm gonna do 1,500 calories a day. What's that like? Oh, it's like 1,500 calories. It's not the 2,000 the USDA says you're supposed to have. It's not the 1,000 they say you're supposed to do when you diet. It's 1,500-ish calories, and I do the best I can, but I do write down every morsel of food I put in my mouth so I can try and get near that equation, 3,500 calories equals one pound. So here's a selfie on the Tower Bridge, and I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I'm walking on my boardwalk on Miami Beach, and then I get crazy. Here I am all of a sudden, I'm at uh, Miami Beach, I'm uh, sorry, Montauk, and, and it's raining, and it's cold, and I'm windy, and I'm trying to walk on the beach, and it's not happening. So everybody get up. Everybody stand up right now. Just stand up. And what I started to do is I said, Spotify is going to be awesome. So I found songs that were 120 beats a minute, and you can march. You can all just march in place. Listen to this beat. Right? You can do this. One, two, three, for everybody. You can just march right now. Every single person, march in place. Now, if you were walking up a hill at 120 beats a minute, or you're walking down a hill at 100, keep going, you guys. Come on, let's go. Right on the beat. Every one of you can do this. This is not hard to do. All you need, you go ahead and sit down. All you need to do, you go up a hill, you're gonna maintain that pace. You go down a hill, you're gonna maintain that pace. That pace is gonna keep your heart rate up and all things are gonna be good. So I had to weigh myself every day on a digital scale. In this case, on October 21st, I weighed 207.2 pounds. That was down from 252. How did I get there and what would I expect to weigh on October 22nd? Well, it's pretty interesting. I have to figure out my calories burned and my calories consumed. In my case, I had 2,874 calories I burned walking around that day and I ate 1,462 calories, which should give me something like a 1,400 calorie differential, right? 1,462, 2,874, and 1,412. So let me take my 3,500 calories equals a pound calculation. This is a rocket science. It's simple division. I should lose about four-tenths of a pound. Did it work? No, nope, didn't work at all. Wasn't even close. As a matter of fact, I lost eight tenths of a pound that day and I predicted four tenths of a pound. Why? Because my body adapted, because it's not an exact science, but I had a framework, I had a guideline, I had a way I could think about it. And just the other day, I hit a number that made me crazily happy. How did I get there? It's really simple. I wanted to gamify my whole world. So I gamified the following way. What is it like to use, uh, lose a quarter pound a day? What is it like to lose a third of a pound? What is it like to lose a half a pound? The doctors say, lose two pounds a week. What is my actual weight each day on the digital scale? And of course, how would I project my weight? Let's say from 252 all the way down to, let's say, weighing 10 pounds. Well, I'm not gonna weigh 10 pounds but I did hit a really important number. Right after I started to quantify the food in and the food out, I was able to see a precipitous and extraordinarily good trend downward until just the other day when I hit 201.9, which actually is 50 pounds off of this body. That 50 pounds, is not the whole story because the results speak for themselves. Yes, a 20% reduction in body weight just by walking to the beat. You can all do that. But I also had a remarkable experience with my cholesterol. It was 179. Now high would be to above 200. So it was never above 200, but I got it down to 119, a 34% improvement. My triglycerides were 457. That's, you're just dead. You were gonna die from that. You will die with those triglycerides. Down to 63, an 86% improvement. And the all evil blood sugar number, the high normal range, 122, a 25% improvement to 91. My doctor said the last time my blood work was this good, I was in utero. <laughs> now, I gotta tell you something. This is all about this is all about quantifying the things you want to quantify. And everyone, every one of you, in your pocket, you have a technology. It's called your smartphone. There are apps available to count calories. Pick the one you like in either the App Store or the Google Play Store. These bands are available, whether it's Fitbit or Fitbug, or I'm using the up, it doesn't matter. The goal is walk every day, count your calories in and out, and use this technology to change your life. Thank you so very, very much.